Welcome to the Determined Mom Show, the only marketing podcast dedicated to guiding mom CEOs into tranquility, wealth, and multiplying those precious moments. Welcome to this episode of the Determined Mom Show. Today, I have with me Jennifer Wilson, and she is the CEO of Jen Wilson Marketing. So welcome, Jen. Oh, thanks so much, Amanda. I'm super excited to be on your podcast. Yeah, I'm super excited to have you because you're going to be talking about email today, which is a huge, huge, huge deal. And we're going to talk about three wise reasons why your email list isn't working for your business. And I know that that's something that a lot of us struggle with, especially as you're getting started and trying to figure out that email marketing component. So I'm very excited to have you. Yeah, I'm super excited. And because too, you know, I feel like a lot of people don't think email is sexy <laughs> or fun, but it's a necessary evil, right? To grow your business. So I'm really excited to be here and hopefully deconstruct some of that for your listeners. Awesome. Well, before we get into all about email, I want to ask you how you got started in your business. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> that that goes way, way back. So my oldest son now is 17. And I must have started this journey, gosh, when he was born, because like, probably like you and like, many other people listening to this show, when you had your child, like things change. I mean, they just do. That's just how it is. Right. And then so at that time, I was working a corporate job. Actually, I still work in corporate. But it just made me reevaluate, like, is this really what you want? You're spending all your time here and you're you know dropping off your your five month old baby with somebody else. So anyway, it started with that and I did a whole bunch of different things. I tried all of these different things, but eventually what I realized was that I wanted to do something that I could do on my own time because I was still working my nine to five job. I had the kids. So it wasn't like I could do anything during the day. And so I landed on blogging. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be doing this blogging thing because I can I like to write I can do it at night when the kids go to bed, you know, that sort of thing. And, and when you get into that blogging world, you start to hear, all, and this is years ago, a long time ago, but you start to hear all of the things about how are you going to make money with your blog, right? I mean, and you need to build a list. Like I heard that, right? Pat Flynn was like one of the first people that I started listening to podcasts like a long time ago. He's like, my email list, I wish I had built it earlier. And this is the most valuable thing you can have. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to build my list. And I just got started with that. Obviously, I tried to teach myself because I'm a DIY kind of person. I think I can, you know, like figure it out. And I did, but it took me so long. And I made every mistake in the book, but I built a list. And then after I built the list, I realized that's only half the problem. Because then you still have to write the emails yeah, and you, you still have to, have to engage something. with them. Yeah. And then you have to sell and then you still have to make money through your email list. And so that was the second half of the problem. And then I started helping people with those things. And that's how I ended up to where I am today, where I help people precisely with that, with, with writing emails that will help, you know, them get it opened and read and clicked and and make money from your list, but also to speak to your audience is something that I'm still doing on the side. I still, you know, my kids are still at home. I'm still working my corporate nine to five, but it's something that I'm able to, in that time that I have, work on it on the side. That's awesome. And I think at least from my perspective, that's how I got started too. I was like, okay, I don't want to go back to work. And then um, I started a blog and then it turned into a oh. business and then it turned into marketing. So it's like a very similar story. And I think, you know, you just kind of have to be open to going with the flow and open to where your journey leads you and not be tied to one thing. I think that's a really good example of that. I, I totally agree with that because I actually got started. Um, it's a long story, but I got started helping people with their lead magnets, like figuring out what makes a lead magnet really good. But what I realized was that people were like, what now what? And the most of the questions I was getting when I was talking to people about lead magnets was, but now what do I do? What do I write? And so that's how I, like how you said, that's how it kind of morphed into where I am today. So anyway, 
that's a good point. <laughs> and that's awesome. And I'm glad that that happened because you wouldn't be here today without oh, that thanks. morph and the transformation. <laughs> so very grateful. Yeah, so thank you. Let's go ahead and talk about how our email list isn't working. What are those reasons why the email list isn't working and what, what can we do to overcome them? So the first thing I would say is at the very, very top of your funnel, right, is, is you're, you're getting people into your world is the lead magnet. Okay, so, so your lead magnet isn't compelling. So it could be that that's the first thing, right, that your email list isn't working because number one, you're not getting people to actually opt in to your list. So you don't really have a, a decent amount of people on your list. And number two is even if you are getting people to opt into your list, you could be getting the wrong people on your list who are not going to buy what you're selling anyway. So it's really two things. You, you know, you have to get people to opt in. And the second thing is that you have to get the right people to opt in. And that speaks to making sure that your lead magnet is thoughtfully thought out, basically on the front end, what you're going to offer on the front end has to lead them down the path and prepare them to buy your offer at the end of the day. So I would say that's the first thing. And I don't know if you wanted to get into more of that and talk yeah. about that. Okay, I, cool. I'm just going to ask you, because this has actually yeah. come up in my community this week. And actually, I was oh, just okay. on a call with a potential marketing client and she's having that same struggle. Like her email is like a report or something or her lead magnet is like some sort of report. And I was like, so we need to work on that. <laughs> so, you know, like what is the best way? And I have my own answer to this being in marketing, but I want to know your way. What is the best way to find out what that best lead magnet is? Okay. So, and this is what people, um, it's such a boring answer. And you're going to probably, I would be surprised if we had like different, or, or if you didn't agree with this, and that is that you have to know who your ideal client is. So if you have no idea who that person is, you're throwing something out there to, and you're not going to attract anyone that way. So it's really going back and doing that research, which I, I will tell you that I resisted it. Like I knew that I had to do it because everyone's telling me, who's your ideal client? You need to know who your ideal client is. And I'm like, hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I know who my ideal client is, but I didn't really, right. I didn't do the research. I didn't sit down because it's boring. I didn't want to do it. Right. Yeah. And then when you do sit down and do it, you're confronted with a lot of stuff that's hard that for some people can be hard to deal with because now you're looking at what are other people in my space doing? right? You're forced to take a look at that. And then you get into the comparison game and then you start to feel bad about yourself. So, so it's doing that ideal client stuff is not easy, but super necessary because if you don't know what problem you're solving, because the point of your lead magnet is to solve a problem for your ideal client. Okay. So if you don't know who your ideal client is, you can't solve a problem for them. And if you don't know who your ideal client is, you don't know what problem you're solving. You can't hook them to get them to join your email list. So the most foundational thing that you need to start with is knowing who your ideal client is. And then you can figure out from there, what problems are they struggling with? What can I help them with? Yeah. And that's the, that's how you get started with that. Yeah. That's exactly Exactly what you said. <laughs> like, I completely yeah, I, agree with you. Uh, yeah, I, I like, figured, yeah. yeah. The fundamental marketing principle and, and, you know, solving that problem. Like, I think about myself and like, what is the main thing that people ask me about, like about Google My Business, for example? And it's, what is it? Like, how do I use it? Like, what is it going to do for my business? And so then that's why I created my email sequence, which is like my lead magnet. And it's an educational email series just to kind of familiarize them with what Google My Business is, how it can help their business and how to use it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and once you know, it's so much easier. right? And, and the thing is, you need to pay attention. So as a business owner, you have to go out and talk to people. Right. And that's how. When I got started, I was like, I'm going to be this blogger because I'm an INFP, like a total introvert, right? Like, I'm like, I can write and nobody will know and it will be great. And, and, and I can make money and not have to show up, but you do still have to show up and you still have to talk 
talk to people and figure out what they're struggling with. And once you know that, everything, like like, pay attention, what are they asking me? And that's how I ended up where I am because I'm like, hmm, I'm working with people on their lead magnets. And the number one question I'm getting is now, what do I do after I have my lead magnet? Like, I don't know what to write. And then I'm like, why am I not helping people with this problem? And, And so that's how you pay attention to what they're saying, but you will just also do the background research. So yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. I agree 100%. And one thing that I have learned to do in my Facebook group in the Determined Mom Show community is I have those questions and then I have a spreadsheet that, you know, when you click approve, it automatically puts all that into the spreadsheet. We talked about uh, spreadsheets uh, before we started. Yeah. Today, but <laughs> I was like, I love spreadsheets. And you're like, ew. Major aversion. <laughs> But anyway, so I have a spreadsheet and one of the questions that I ask is always, what is your biggest marketing struggle? And I have like 400 answers now, you know, like because that is yeah. an amazing way to gather data on that. That well, is I would say, so valuable. Yeah. Like if you have a Facebook group, if you're starting a Facebook group, I hope you're collecting that data from the people that you're having join your group because that's huge. Oh, you should absolutely leverage that if people are joining your group. Yeah. Great yeah. And then I love that whole conversation we just had about the lead magnet, by the way, because I think that is going to be game changing for some of the people listening. So I'm loving it. And what is the next? What's number two on the list? So if I can go back to that, sorry, I just want to add a couple of things. So people are like, what's the secret? Like, what can I offer to my people that's going to make them opt in? Like, just tell me what it is. Like, is it a PDF? Is it an ebook? Is it a video series? Is it a challenge? And the answer to that goes back to what you and I just talked about is knowing your ideal client and what they want. So I can't tell you, oh, PDFs are performing gangbusters or, you know, I mean, you can kind of say generally, like based on the kind of audience you have this type of lead magnet or this format might be better based on where they're at in your world. Meaning like if they're cold traffic, you know, they might need something quicker and easier to consume versus someone who's a little warmer, who might be able to invest more time. But still people are always like, tell me what is like, what's working now. And I can say that if you have something that speaks to your ideal client and their burning pain point is something that they want solved now, it almost doesn't really matter what format it comes in. You could have like this simple like PDF thing. And if it answers their question and it's speaking directly to them, they're going to want that. And so I just want to dispel this thing. Like you have to kind of like know exactly what's working in the marketplace right now. I mean, there might be trends, but really it goes back to knowing who your ideal client is and what they want. What's easiest for them to consume given their lifestyle? And that's how you figure out what to offer and how to deliver it. So, sorry, I I love that. (laughs) No, that's awesome. And I also, I thought of another like type of lead magnet that I feel like is often overlooked and that's a free appointment or something like that, you know? Oh yeah. Like um, just like a preliminary call. Like I'm going to spend 15 minutes with you and we're going to talk about this and you know, I think that's a really valuable lead magnet too, because not only is it going to quickly build that no like, and trust factor with whomever is booking Mm -hmm. it, but it also, they can ask you anything, you know, in that. Well, yeah, the call and getting someone to talk to you is probably the highest, like if you're trying to sell them into an offer, that's going to convert for you the best, right? Yeah. Because you're going to get, like you said, that no like and trust factor. So definitely, I mean, if that's working, if that fits in with the type of business that you have and, you know, it's where your clients are sort of in the buyer's journey, I think that's a great, it's a great idea. Great lead magnet. Yeah. It's just one that I always hear like the PDF and the workbook and all those things. And I'm like, you know, yeah, but you could also do a free call or whatever, you know, like whatever. You could, yeah. You yeah, could even absolutely. do a spreadsheet. No, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. If you gave me a spreadsheet with like a genie that could like put all the stuff in and figure it out, then 
locked in for that. Now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> they do make extensions for that, but yeah. No. <laughs> All right. So what is number two? Okay. So number two is let's just say that you get past that whole lead magnet hurdle, right? And you've got the right people opting into your list, mm -hmm. but nothing's happening with your list. Okay. So could it be that you're promoing or you're trying to sell too much to them, which is because some people are like, okay, I've got them on my email list. The whole purpose is to sell them something and I'm going to sell them this thing. Yes, you do want to sell them something, but at the same time, my whole, the way I teach people, and there's going to be people that teach just completely differently across the spectrum, but I truly believe that the best way to get people to buy your stuff is to actually build a relationship with them in email. Email is like this. People always grumble about emails. I get so much email. People are spamming me with emails, but yet the email inbox is where people need to check for their most important things. Bank statements. For my kids, everything from their school comes in email, right? Their schedules, um, all of that stuff comes in email. So whether people like it or not, it's like this sacred place where you have to go in and you have to check it. And so we should treat it that way. I truly believe that we should treat it that way. So when I teach people, I teach them, you should be building a relationship giving value, creating this bond most of the time. Let's use the 80-20 rule, but use it for 80% building relationship and 20% selling. You're not, you shouldn't be bombing and promoing your people with all of your offers and then affiliate offers and all this other stuff, because that's going to turn people off. So I would say that that's a big thing. It's, sort of changing and shifting your mindset about how to treat people in the inbox. So I will, okay, so I'm going to back up. In my day job, I actually am a business coach for insurance agents. Okay, so that's my corporate day job. And the whole reason I got started with this helping people with their email sequences is because they'd say, I need to sell more insurance. I need to sell more life insurance. Okay. So we'd have this conversation, but I, what I realized is what they're doing is they're getting people in the door and the person is sitting down in front of them and they're frustrated because they can't get that person to buy life insurance right then and there. And I'm trying to tell them that it is a journey, right? There are some people that you're going to be able to convince while they're sitting in that chair that they need to buy life insurance today. But there are many people, most of the people that are not going to be ready to buy today. So what do you need to do? You need to plant the seed. You need to keep in contact with them. Be top of mind so that when they are ready with gentle reminders, hey, remember, you know, you have this need. You should be addressing this need. Don't go without it. But it's these soft sort of gentle reminders over time so that when they're ready to buy, you are there. So I'm trying to change their mindset with this whole that person sitting in front of me, I need to sell them today. And when they don't, I'm a failure. And then I forget about it. And they don't follow up with that person again. They're moving on to the next person and trying to get that person to sit in front of them, sell them something right then and there. And that's what people are trying to do in their emails, right? They're trying to get people to buy, 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 because now I've got you. Now you're in my world and I'm going to sell to you. And, and you absolutely should. You are in business to sell your stuff right? But in the big picture of things, I truly believe that if you build a relationship over time, you're going to be the person that they think about. You're going to create what I like to call like truly like super fans and evangelists of your brand, that they're going to be the ones referring other people to you because of the way that they're treated. They're going to be the ones that are going to buy all your stuff, but it takes time. And so I think that's the mindset shift is you may be trying to sell too much to your people, maybe too soon, maybe take a longer term view of it. There's not going to be this sort of immediate payoff necessarily, but that's okay. Yeah. Keep it going. So that would be my number two reason why I think. I love number two. Um, <laughs> I think it's absolutely perfect. And I love that you used that 80-20 principle in there and reminded us like, and it's like, what is that? Um, jab, 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 right hook. 
Oh, right. That, uh, Gary, Gary B. B. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it that's reminds me of. So it's like true. Yeah. I mean, and Gary V is seeing it. And he and I would, mm-hmm. I would say, are on the complete opposite ends of the spectrum. So you can't say like, oh, Jen, she's because she's like this, like, you know, mellow person who doesn't like to be in people's faces. But then you got Gary V saying the same thing that you need to be putting in things in that relationship bank first and then asking for the sale. And providing value and knowledge and and even personal, you know, connection, I think is also extremely, it's become so much more important in the last year. Oh, absolutely. um, Than anything else. So, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. What about number three? So actually that segues nicely into number three. (laughs) Okay. Um, you said personal connection, right? And and so I would say number three, maybe your emails aren't working because they're not compelling enough to be open. And think about who you open emails from first. If you had an email from your friend in your inbox, you'd be opening that first. And that's what you're trying to create. That's how I teach people to write their emails. Of course, again, there's going to be different people teaching different things, but that's just how I do it, right? Is like you said, creating that personal connection has always been important, but now because of COVID, oh my goodness, and we're all online. And and so people are craving that kind of, you know, connection with other people and you can absolutely do it in email. I think from working with a lot of women and female entrepreneurs, there's a lot of fear about about sending these emails, first of all, okay, so they don't even want to send emails because they're scared. They don't want to be spammy. But, But second of all, when we talk about personal connections, putting your voice in, creating a story in your emails, they're afraid to do that. There, there's real fear there in being seen. And that's a mindset thing that we all need to work on that if we're going to have these businesses, and if we're going to leverage the power of email marketing, because let's face it, why should you spend all this energy thinking about your lead magnet, driving traffic to it, getting people in for then your emails not to convert for you in some way, right? And the way I believe that it converts for you is creating that personal connection and not selling too much, right? Creating that relationship. And that is exactly like you said, how do you build that relationship in your emails? And the first step is to understand that people actually want to hear from you if it's done right. So if it's done right, then you're not gonna have to worry about feeling spammy or or showing up. And I think it's just that initial getting out there and once they do and they start to get some and getting responses to your emails it's not easy right I mean how many people actually answer your questions when you start getting answers to your questions it is a, an amazing day right <laughs> you're like oh my god someone actually took the time to write back to me or they're answering my question but when that happens it's like this amazing thing and then they realize I can be myself because the people that like me for who I am and what I actually stand for are going to be the ones, right, that are resonating with you. They're going to be the ones that are going to be the the super fans and the evangelists of your brand. They're going to be the ones to buy your stuff and refer stuff. But it's all about, like in marketing, like I'm sure you're going to agree with this, is that a big part of your job is not just attracting people, but it's also repelling people. Like, because you need to get the people out that don't like you and are not going to buy your stuff anyway. And that's hurtful. It's hard. That's why I resisted it for like how many years, right? I didn't want to go out there and put myself out there and be rejected by all these people who are, you know? Yeah. But it's necessary. Yep. And everything. It's necessary. But when you get those people that you know love you for what you do, it is an amazing thing. So 
that's the first thing. That's the first prong of that is that your emails aren't being, there's no reason for them to open it because it's not like it's coming from a friend. So maybe they feel like, oh, it is an advertisement. Why would I open that if I know I'm going to be sold to, right? And then another thing is that people tend to overlook the importance of the subject line. I mean, and subject lines, my God, they're like so boring, right? Like you got, now I got to write this stupid subject line, but truly, if your subject line isn't engaging in some way, then they're not going to open it. Then they're not going to read what you have to say. Then they can't connect with you. And then this whole thing isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's so true. So that's the second part to that is that you do have to spend some time thinking about your email subject line. It shouldn't be clickbaity, right? And people are tired of that anyway. Yeah. And it should have some connection to what you're writing. People don't want to be misled. Like I'm opening it for this reason, or it could be curiosity. Curiosity is a huge hook, right? So that, and that's okay. I'm curious about this. What does this mean? Okay. I'm going to find out in the email, but we don't want it to be like misleading. Like yeah. here's my, here's my subject line. And I don't even talk about that, or there's no connection to it in the email. People feel misled when that happens. My least favorite subject lines are the ones that are like RE and then like it's, it actually gets a reply. Oh my gosh, I hate those. Yes. I'm like, don't. You didn't really? have a conversation before. Uh, like, no. You can't do that because then it makes me think I've missed something or, yes. you know. Ugh. And that's not cool. That's not cool. No. Right? <laughs> like, oh my God. Okay, right. You might get someone to open it, but at the end of the day, you're like, well, that wasn't cool. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I hate those. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. So do you have any tips on great ways to craft a subject line? Like certain um, elements that we need to include or anything like that? Here's my personal opinion on that. Because there's there's a lot, right? People are like, you have to use a certain amount of characters that, that really responds well. You should use emojis. And I would say all of that are great guidelines. Like the subject line shouldn't be run on. It shouldn't be too long, right? And you can use emojis sparingly. You're not going to use emojis in every single email or people are going to get tired of it, right? But I would say the way to sort of get this whole personal connection is that you have your ideal client, right? We know, okay, here's my ideal client. And you write your email like you're talking to that one person. So I always suggest, okay, I have this ideal client worksheet. You print out a picture of who you think best embodies that with their characteristics and you post it right by your computer so that when you're writing your emails, you're writing to Julie. You're not writing to the 200 people on your list or the 1500 people on your list. You are writing to Julie, okay? And when you think about your subject line, think about how you would talk to Julie. Like, how would you write an email to a friend? I guarantee you, it wouldn't have all caps in it. Like, every word is capitalized, like a headline. And maybe it would. And if it's appropriate for that email, then cool, go for it, right? Like, there's subject lines where I might write, like, one word, all in caps, right? But I always try to think of it from... If Julie is my super fan and my friend, right, who I genuinely love as my client and she likes me, how would I, in this email that I'm writing, what, what would I put in the subject line? I mean, it's something that you need to do for every email you send, whether it's to your list, your friend, to your, you know, to the school, to your teacher, whatever. You have to put a subject line there. What would it be? So you want it to look like something that they would get in their inbox from a friend. And so there's no formula for that, unfortunately, yeah. you know, I love um, that though. just that's what I would say that alone makes it so much easier to think about writing an email. Like if you're thinking right. about talking to one person instead of like, oh my goodness, I have to send this to 1500 people. What should I yes. say? Like there's yes. a difference, you know, there's, totally. There's a difference in pressure. Totally. And yeah. Messaging. I love that. It takes yeah. It takes that uh, vice grip of pressure away. I love it. <laughs> yeah, just talk to that one person that you know loves you. And then and then it just feels so much more natural. And you're going to write your email in a way that sounds like it's you. 
And trust me, I am in corporate. I have been in corporate for 27 years and I have made the mistake. I look back at my first emails and I'm like, who is this person? Like, she doesn't even sound like a real friendly person. She sounds very matter of fact. She sounds like she's smart. But I mean, is that what people want to connect with? No, they want to connect with the real person. And so over time, I'm like, I've learned to relax into it. I've learned to just say, what would you say in this situation? Like, really? And write it in that way. Yeah. And anyway, that's how I do it. <laughs> That's awesome. And obviously it works. So that's great. I think it, yeah, I, I think it does. And and it, and it's interesting when people come back and, and you have a conversation with someone and they will bring up something that you wrote in your email because they start, they know what's going on in your life when you, and, and this is not to mean like you're going to be word vomiting everything that's happening in your life, like a, like a Facebook feed. You're not, but you're going to be intentional about the emails that you send but those things that you put in the email create that connection. It has that story where people are going to remember it, but it still has a point to it. <laughs> so, yeah, I love it. I love it. So <laughs> I know that you have a freebie for our listeners. I do. And do you want to tell us about that so that way we can get a little bit more um, information on what you do and try to get our own traction with our businesses. Yeah, absolutely. So the freebie that I have is, again, it was born out of um, a lot of the questions I was getting when I was helping people create their lead magnets and is what to offer. So again, there's many things. So I actually have this, I call it the sticky lead magnet formula, right? it's, It's all of the prongs you need to meet in order for it to be compelling. And again, no guarantees, right, about anything that you put out there. But if you meet these things, the, the chances are, are better than if you just go without considering the things in this formula. But to answer your question about the freebie, the freebie is actually over 125 lead magnet ideas that I actually have them grouped by industry so that you can take a look. Oh, I'm an artist. Oh, here's some ideas for artists. But the great thing about it is I can't possibly cover every single industry in that thing. But you can take a look at the other industries to get creative ideas, right? So that's the start is that you got to have that great lead magnet to bring people into your world. And then I can help you with how to craft that, that I call it a sticky relationship funnel or the sticky emails that you're going to write to people that's going to build that connection in their inbox and allow you to sell your stuff without feeling slimy or yucky um, because you're being yourself. Wow. That is an awesome lead magnet, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So sorry. I forgot to tell you where to find it. Yeah, so, definitely. Tell us. Um, you will go to www.jenwilsonmarketing.com slash lead magnet. All one Perfect. word. Lead magnet. Yeah. Awesome. That is awesome. And I will have that in the show notes too. So then that way, if you're listening, you're on the treadmill and you don't have a pen to write it down. Don't worry, you can just go to the page and you'll find it. So awesome. Perfect. So where is the best place for people to connect with you online? Okay, so I have my website, which is www.jenwilsonmarketing.com. But you can also find me on social on Instagram. And I'm jenwilson.marketing um, on Instagram and on LinkedIn, I'm actually Jen Wilson Marketing on LinkedIn. And so those are the two platforms that you'll find me on. And then I would love to connect. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. I don't think I'm connected with you on LinkedIn. I think I'm going to have to. Yeah, we should. We should be. Why are we not? <laughs> I know, exactly. I'm making Clubhouse and LinkedIn my two platforms this year. So yes, um, I'm loving exactly. both of them. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And I know we just connected on Clubhouse. So mm-hmm. yeah, we've got to do the LinkedIn. Yeah, definitely. And one more question for you. What is your favorite thing about being able to, you know, work in your business and help people with their email marketing? It's, I think it's the feeling of, it's just the gratification of helping people with a problem that is it's not easy to figure out. So because I remember when I was in this particular situation, 
and trying to figure it out on my own and not knowing what I was doing and just throwing stuff out there and seeing if it worked and just wasting a lot of time, like seriously, a lot of time, like years. Okay. And it's just the gratification of people telling me, I'm so happy and I'm so confident with this email series that I wrote. And I'm so proud of being able to tell people, get this freebie because they know what's coming after it. And they know that it's written in a way that reflects them, their personality, and also helps to guide them to what they want that person to do. So I think I just love that feeling. I'm a, um, I've taken that strengths finders and I'm like a developer and a, like a coach. So, so this yeah. is something that I, um, I think I'm sort of naturally wired to do. And I just find it so super rewarding. And I work mostly with female entrepreneurs that are moms that, um, so, so we connect on that personal level. Like we understand, you know, trying to juggle all of those things yeah. and make a difference in the world. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. And in our homes, right? <laughs> Everywhere. And in our homes. Yeah. And so I just love the idea of helping people on the same journey that have kind of a shared vision of what they want their life to be and how, and a lot of the women I work with have the same, I guess it's a vision of being that sort of example to their kids of what it really means to, you know, I mean, I still work my corporate job for many practical reasons. And also because I actually like my corporate job. But I still have that vision, right? And, and people connect with that vision of being, showing my kids, okay, I can do this and I can try to do something that I absolutely love, that I create my own life. I design my own life and I'm going to keep trying and helping other women on that same journey is just like, just so rewarding. Yeah, so. I agree. I love that feeling too. A lot of my clients are also mom business owners, so I love that commiseration and cooperation and partnership that comes out of it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I love that commiseration and cooperation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Those are the things that come to mind. But yeah. So, well, thank you so much, Jen, for coming on and sharing your infinite knowledge with us. I love that you have kind of solved a lot of problems for us today, I think, in my mind anyway, uh, as far as email marketing goes. So if you are listening to this, please go ahead and leave a review on iTunes. You can also leave me a message, an email, anything that you'd like um, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. You can email me at Amanda at The Determined Mom. And yeah, we'd love to hear what you think. This episode of the Determined Mom Show is brought to you by the Google My Business Master Course. This course is full of every step-by-step -step detail that you need to master Google My Business. When you master Google My Business, you will be able to learn everything that you need to know to get into that top three coveted spot on Google search. If your clients are searching for your business, and they're not finding you in that top three, you're definitely losing money. Visit tdm-marketing.com to learn how to master Google My Business and increase your revenue in just six to nine weeks.